In this lesson, we're going to look at the volume of spheres, and a sphere is just like a 3D circle. Uh, so we're going to have a similar formula to all the other shapes that had a circular base. It is a little different. Um, and you'll notice in the formula, there's no height. And the reason that there isn't any height labeled is because the height is kind of like the diameter. Uh, so if you want to hang around for a little bit at the end of this video, I will go over where that formula comes from. Uh, but the formula is 4 thirds times pi r cubed, not squared like the other ones. It's actually cubed. So let's check out some examples. Uh, first, let's just find a simple volume, and we're going to round to the nearest tenth. So the first thing that you do is you write the formula. So I've got v equals 4 thirds pi r cubed, and now I plug in what I know. I know that the radius is 4, so I'll plug that in for r, and I'm actually going to leave the pi as pi and plug in 4 cubed. Order of operations tells you that you have to do 4 cubed first, so that is 4 thirds pi, uh, 4 cubed is 64. Then you power up your calculator and you do 4 thirds times pi times 64. And you get 268.1 when you round to the nearest tenth. And since we're talking volume, it's cubic centimeters. All right, the next example is a little more complicated. It's one of the ones where you might have to find a, a piece of the sphere rather than the volume. And what you'll notice is that the volume is not 288. The volume is 288 pi. So same thing. Don't freak out because it looks a little different. The steps are still the same. First thing you do is you write your formula. 4 thirds pi r cubed. And you plug in what you know. So the volume is 288 pi. So that's what goes in for V. And you don't know anything else, so everything else stays. Now, you're about to have a little simpler um, equation. And this is another reason why I encourage you to not use 3.14, is that sometimes you have pi involved, and it just disappears. Because watch this. I'm going to divide by pi. And then a pi on the top cancels out a pi on the bottom, and all I have left is 288 equals 4 thirds r cubed. So the pi completely went away. I don't have it anymore because I left it as pi. So if I want to get the r by itself, I have to get rid of the 4 thirds. Hopefully you remember from chapter 1, what do you do to inverse a fraction? You multiply by the reciprocal. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 3 fourths. If you don't remember that, you need to start remembering it because you should know by now. So 288 times 3 fourths is 216, and that equals r cubed. So the way that you inverse the cube is you cube root. And the cube root of that is 6. So the radius is 6, and the label is inches. If you want to try letter B on your own, go for it. If you're not there yet, feel free, follow along with me. It's the same as part A, so I'm going to first write the formula. V equals 4 thirds pi r cubed, and then I plug in what I know. So the volume is 36 pi equals 4 thirds pi r cubed. If you now divide both sides by pi, the pi will go away because there's one on the left and one on the right, and then you get 36, just the number 36, equals 4 thirds r cubed. You inverse the fraction by doing the reciprocal, so multiply both sides by 3 fourths, and it cancels. 36 times 3 fourths is 27. And then you inverse the cube by doing the cube root. 
Remember, radicals and exponents are inverses of each other. So that gives me that the radius equals 3, and the label is meters. All right, now we're going to do a little more advanced concept because we're going to take multiple shapes and combine them into one. Real life isn't all made up of one shape, and so sometimes shapes get combined to create other things. So we've got a hemisphere, which they define for us. It's half of a sphere. Hemi means half. And the top of the silo is a hemisphere with a radius of 12. So even though there is a picture, and the rule is draw a picture when there isn't one, sometimes they have a picture, but it's not labeled with everything you need. So I'm going to actually label this picture with what I need to know, which is that the radius is 12. So I'm going to draw on my picture. I don't know if you can see that. I just drew a radius of 12. Maybe I should use a different color. So the radius is 12, and they want the volume. So now I'm going to figure out how to find the volume. Well, it's a, made up of a sphere, so I'm going to find the volume actually of a hemisphere, right? So half a sphere. Plus, there's a full cylinder right here. This is a cylinder. Remember the formula for the volume of a cylinder. And then I'll add those two together and get the whole silo. So the formula for the volume of a sphere is uh, 4 thirds pi, pi r cubed. I'll do that, and then I'll multiply by 1 half, because it's half of a sphere, and that's a full sphere. And then a cylinder is pi r squared height. So let's do the sphere all the way down, or the half sphere, hemisphere, and then we'll do the volume of the cylinder all the way down, and then we'll add them together. So here we go. The radius of the sphere is 12. They told us that in the story, and then I just put it in the picture. So half of 4 thirds pi times 12 cubed. So first I have to calculate 12 cubed. So that is 1,728. I'm just going to get rid of the parentheses because they're making it look harder than it really is. Okay, now remember the two techniques. You can put everything over one, and that might actually be the better technique because you have two denominators here. So I'll put over one over one, and I've got uh, one half times four thirds times pi times 1728. I'll do a couple of decimal places. I get 3,619.1147. Now we'll go over to the cylinder and calculate that. So I've got pi times the radius is still 12 because the volume of the, uh, or the radius of the sphere is obviously the same as the radius of the cylinder. So that's 12 squared, but the height of the um, cylinder is not 52. That 52 has to do with the whole silo. So since this top portion is 12, then the height of the cylinder must be 40 in order for the whole thing to be 52. So I'm actually going to plug in 40 in for the height and not 52. So calculator powered up, first thing you have to do is 12 squared, which is 144. And then I've got pi times 144 times 40. And I get 18,000 95.5737. Uh, then I add these two together. Plus 3619.1147. And does it say to round to anything? Round your answer to the nearest thousandth. That's three decimal places. So when I add them, I get 21,714.688. Since I'm talking volume, 
my label is uh, cubic feet. If you want to try the second example on your own, feel free. If not, you can pause at any time. Uh, let's do it together. This is made up of a cylinder and a cone, so I'm going to find the volume of the cylinder. I'll just write V cylinder plus V cone. Now sometimes it's helpful, or it's actually always helpful, to kind of map out what you're doing. So I've mapped out what I've done. Uh, you need to find the volume of the cylinder and the volume of the cone, and then I'm going to add them together. So the formula for the volume of a cylinder is pi r squared height. The volume of a cone is one-third pi r squared height. So here we go. Uh, pi, the radius of the cylinder is 3, because here's the cylinder right here, right? Radius is part of the circle, so the radius is 3. And the height of the cylinder is 9. So I'll finish that up. That's pi times 9 times 9. And I get 254.469. Now I go over to the cone. I get 1 third times pi. The radius of the cone is the same as the radius of the cylinder, since they're on top of each other. So that's 3 squared, and the height of the cone is 5. This is the cone right here, so the height is 5. So I have to do uh, 3 squared, which is 9. So it's 1 third times pi times 9 times 5. My final answer for that is 99.48, uh, I'll round it to 4. And now I will add them together. I have to finally round my answer to the nearest tenth. So let's see, plus 99.484 plus 254.469, and round it to the nearest tenth is 353. Point, oh, that rounds up. So it actually rounds up to 354. Point zero. Ooh, tricky, tricky. Uh, and that's since it's volume, it's cubic meters. Now, if you want to pause the video here, feel free. Uh, this is as far as you need to go. If you are interested in finding out where the four thirds pi r cubed comes from, because it's a little wacky, um, you're more than welcome to listen. If not, I will never know because this is all electronic. So um, if you want to ask me any questions in class, write them down and ask me when you see me next. If not, uh, play along for another minute and I'll show you where the formula comes from. So hopefully it's no surprise to you that we're going to start off with our volume equals pi r squared height relationship, right? comes from a cylinder. And what you should understand is that the height of a sphere is the diameter. Remember, another way to say diameter is two times the radius. So um, I'm going to plug in that into the formula. So I'll plug in, instead of height, I'll plug in 2r. So I've got pi times r squared times 2r. All right, now I can combine these because they both are r, and we learned in an earlier chapter, a chapter uh, where we talked about exponents, to add exponents when you're multiplying. So I can just rewrite this and say v equals pi. I'll put the 2 in front, so 2 pi uh, r to the third. Now remember when we talked about cones and cylinders, we talked about how the uh, relationship between a cone and a cylinder is that the cylinder uh, is three times a cone. So, right, this represents one third. So if you fill a cone with like, you know, popcorn or jelly beans or marbles or something, it would only fill about one third of the, um, of the cylinder. If you have a sphere, pretend that's a sphere. I don't know how to make it a sphere. Maybe go like, that, you know, now that just looks like a weird smiley face. <laughs> um, so if you have a sphere and you have it and you fill it um, and you try and put it in a cylinder, you only fill it about two-thirds of the way. So 
um, you'd fill a little more, but not the full sphere. So I can use the relationship, uh, I can put that two-thirds into the formula, and I can say V equals, the same way we put in the one-third, I can do the two-thirds, and then put the rest of the formula. So I can now just kind of, you know, put this over one and combine and give V equals four-thirds pi r cubed. So that's where it comes from, and you don't necessarily have to remember where it comes from, you just have to um, understand that it is another formula for a sphere. They're all related to the volume of a cylinder, and if you have any questions, write them down and ask me when you come to class.